Hi students, hope all are doing well. In your syllabus, you have one plant pathology unit. In that, you have to study some of the important bacterial, fungal and viral diseases found in plants. So, today in this video, I will be discussing about one of the most important bacterial disease found in plants, that is ground gold disease. So, let's move on to the video. Ground gold is a widespread plant disease caused by the soil bacterium Agrobacterium tumefaciens. This disease is characterized by the formation of large tumor like swellings or golds at the crown region of the plant. So crown is the junction between stem and root. So here golds or tumors develop at the crown region. That's why this disease is known as crown gold disease. In addition to crown region, tumors can also develop in the branches of trees, on petioles and on leaf veins. It is mainly found in stone fruit, palm trees, brambles and several species of ornamental plants. In India, the disease most commonly occurs on apple, peach, apricot, almond, grape, rose, pear, cherry and plum. And infected plants grow poorly, their yields will be reduced. And in case of severe infection, the plants may die. So here you can see uh, the photographs of uh, infected plants. The first photograph shows a rose plant infected with crown gold disease. And the second photograph shows, second photograph shows grapevine infected with crown gold disease. And third photo uh, shows a tomato plant infected with crown gold disease. Mm, here you can see the tumor like swelling in the stem region. So these plant tumors have certain histological similarities to human and animal tumors. So the cause and mechanism of their formation have been extensively studied by researchers. And despite these similarities there also occurs difference between this plant tumor and tumors in animals and humans. Uh, now let's see what are the symptoms of this disease. So uh, it first appears as small swellings on stem and roots. Young golds will be soft, spherical, white or flesh colored. And the size of the golds may range from 7 millimeters to 100 millimeters. And as this golds become older, it becomes irregular in shape and it may turn brown or black. Some tumors are spongy and may crumble and become detached from the host plant. Some tumors will break apart uh, and other tumors will be very hard and woody and it looks knobby. And in some cases several goals may occur on the same root or stem. And eventually these uh, tumors or goals rot and fell down and develop again during the next uh, growing season that is after some time this uh, goal may fell down rot and fell down and other symptoms of this disease are uh, the infected plant becomes stunted uh, that means uh, the growth of the plant becomes stopped then uh, they produce small chlorotic leaves. Chlorotic leaves means the leaves will be deficient in chlorophyll. So instead of normal green color, the leaves will appear in uh, yellow color. And uh, the infected plants will be more susceptible to adverse environmental conditions. So that's all about the, that's all about the symptoms of the disease. And next, let's see uh, about the pathogen. So this disease is caused by the bacterium Agrobacterium tumefaciens. It infects a wide range of dicotyledonous plants coming under rose family. It is a gram-negative rod-shaped bacterium and it is known sporing. It is motile with peritrachus flagella. Here you can uh, see the diagram of the bacteria. It is uh, rod-shaped and you can see the fine thread like structures which is the flagella and this bacterium is closely related to rhizobium as you all know rhizobium is a nitrogen fixing bacteria so this bacterium is closely related to rhizobium then they grow aerobically and they exist singly or in pairs 
and this bacterium consists of heterogeneous group of strains and based on the utilization of different carbohydrates and other biochemical tests uh, this agrobacterium is classified mainly into three biovars among these three biovars biovar 3 is the uh, main pathogen occurring worldwide and it causes the disease then uh, the tumor inducing agent in this bacterium is a plasmid which is known as tumor inducing plasmid so the tumor inducing ability of this bacterium resides in a very specialized plasmid which is known as tumor inducing plasmid uh, as you all know plasmids are extra chromosomal genetic materials found in bacteria so this ta plasmid is a large circular dna molecules of about 200 kilo base pairs and the bacteria that lack this TA plasmid are unable to cause disease. That means uh, this TA plasmid is essential for the tumor inducing ability of this bacterium. And the most important characteristic property of this bacterium is to integrate a part of its TA plasmid that is called tDNA into the host chromosome. That is, this bacterium is capable of integrating a portion of the TDA, TA plasmid, which is known as tDNA, into the host chromosome. And once this tDNA is integrated into the host chromosome, uh, it is known as transformed cell. Then the cell will be called as transformed cell. So, this is a diagram of uh, TA plasmid present in agrobacterium tumefaciens and size of this plasmid is 200 kb and so this diagram shows the TA plasmid present in agrobacterium tumefaciens and the overall size of this plasmid is 200 kb from this to this region this region is known as this is the tDNA portion and here you can see the tDNA portion contains several genes. Uh, one gene is the gene coding for the unusual amino acid opine. It also contains the genes for auxin and cytokine. And it is this tDNA region that is integrated into the plant cell once the plant cell becomes infected with this bacterium. Okay. Now let's see how the disease develops. So this bacterium is soil born that is it lives aprophytically in soil for up to two years and it enters the host plant through recent wounds through recent wounds created by cultural practices grafting or wounds caused by other insects etc. Once it enters into the host plant what happens it uh, integrates its tDNA into the host chromosome and the plant cell becomes transformed and the transformed plant cells express the genes present on the tDNA. I have uh, told you earlier that the tDNA portion contains several genes and once this plant cell becomes transformed, it starts expressing these genes. Uh, the transformed cells start synthesizing opines. These opines are unusual amino acids. And these amino acids will be utilized by the bacteria. Plants cannot utilize this amino acids. Uh, the transformed cell also uh, start producing elevated amounts of indolacetic acid and cytokinins. These two that is indolastic acid and cytokinins are plant hormones. So in presence of elevated amounts of these plant hormones, the plant cell starts uncontrolled growth and division. And this uncontrolled growth and division leads to tumor formation. And um, the swellings develop. That is young tumors begins to develop then the bacteria mainly occupy the intercellular spaces around the periphery of the tumor and are not found in the 
center of the enlarging tumor. The bacteria mainly occupies the periphery of the tumor. It is not found in the center. Then the smooth and soft young tumors will be easily injured and attacked by other insects and saprophytic microorganisms. And uh, the tumors decay. The tumors decay and uh, these tissues then releases the bacteria into the soil and uh, this bacteria again infect new plants and the cycle continues. And older tumors often become woody and hard. The vascular bundles in the tumors will be ineffective. Vascular bundles means you will be knowing xylem and phloem are the tissues found in vascular bundles. So, they help in water transport. So, in case of tumor tissues, the vascular bundles will be ineffective. So, the plant cells do not get sufficient water and nourishment. So, after some period, this entire tumor regresses and does not reappear. But in some cases, some portion of the tumor remain alive, alive and form additional tumor tissue during the same or following season. In some cases, secondary tumors also appear at a site distant from this primary tumors. And uh, these secondary tumors will be bacteria free. And uh, this is the uh, diagram that shows the disease cycle, how the disease development occurs. So, here you can see the agrobacterium tumefaciens, the bacterial cells present in soil. When it comes in contact with the host plant, it enters the host plant through recent wounds. So here you can see the plant cell. This is the plant cell and this is the bacterial cell. So well, this bacterial cell becomes attached to the plant cell and after this attachment step what happens? The bacteria integrates its tdna portion the bacteria integrates its tdna into the plant chromosome so once this tdna becomes integrated into the plant cell it is known as transformed cell so this is a so now this is a transformed cell okay and what happens this transformed cells now starts uh, expressing um, the growth hormones that is cytokinins, indolastic acid, etc. So, in presence of uh, elevated levels of this phytohormones, uh, the plants start uncontrolled division. So, the uncontrolled division of the plant cell, uncontrolled growth and division of the plant cell occurs and a tumor begins to develop. Here you can see a swelling. So, tumor formation begins and ultimately it develops into a uh, uh, lar large tumor. And after some period, uh, this uh, tumor will be attacked by other insects and other saprophytic microorganisms and it becomes decomposed. And the bacteria will be again released into the, the bacteria will be released into soil again and it again infect new plants and the cycle continues so this is the mechanism of tumor formation so now let's see what are the control measures of this disease so the most important control measure is the most important control measure is a mandatory inspection of nursery stock and the rejection of all infected trees and uh, the susceptible nursery stocks should not be planted in fields known to be infested with plant with pathogen and because the bacteria mainly enters through fresh wounds the wounding of the plant should be avoided then root chewing insects in the nursery should be controlled to reduce the ground gall incidence and growers should purchase and plant only ground gall free trees and another important method to control this disease is biological control. For biological control, the germinated seeds or nursery seedlings are dipped in a suspension of a particular strain of uh, agrobacterium radiobacter. 
So, agrobacterium radiobacter is a bacteria that is antagonistic to this agrobacterium tumefaciens. That means this agrobacterium radiobacter inhibit this agrobacterium tumefaciens. Uh, through the production of this agrobacterium radiobacter produce some antibiotics. These antibiotics are known as agrosin 84. And through the production of this agrosin 84, uh, it inhibit uh, the growth of agrobacterium tumefaciens uh, and thus help to control uh, the disease. Uh, so that's all about uh, this crown gold disease. So watch this video, it will be useful for you. Thank you.